Hey guys, it's those guys with your host Matt Marrero along with your other host. I'm Anthony Toto, hey. Yes, it's Anthony Toto coming back for another podcast. We haven't had you on for a while. Uh, last time we had you on actually, uh, it was you and I talking about, uh, what was it? We were talking about uh, Juong the Grudge. The grudge. Yeah, yeah, the, the second grudge. one. We talked the second one. Yeah, 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 yeah. The Japanese second one. So not even because it's funny because like there's the the grudge. Just not to get too into it right now because we're doing Star Trek Thursdays today. But it's really weird the the numbering order with the Japanese grudge. So we're not talking about that today though. Today we're talking about uh, two pilots for Star Trek TOS, i.e., the original series. So uh, with it's very interesting that there are two pilots. Uh, there were a lot of chances given to Gene Roddenberry and Co. And I'm very happy because we have all of the Star Trek goodness that we have today. But it was so interesting at the time, Anthony, if you don't know. Um, I feel like you'd know, but the off chance that you didn't, or oh, yeah. some of the people listening in don't know. They were not supposed to get a second pilot. Like, there was, like, after the first pilot no. not working, which was The Cage, it could have just been canceled. And it would have just been some random sci-fi show that people would have been like, oh, man, what could have been? But, heck, yeah. we... Uh, thank honestly, God it they, wasn't. Yeah, thank God it wasn't canceled. But you know something really interesting? It probably wouldn't have even gotten to the point of us going what would have been. No one would have probably even... Like, people would have maybe looked it up and it would have been some Wikipedia blurb. But no one would probably be able to find it sans, like, a VHS tape. Maybe. Yeah, it would just be a footnote in history. Yeah, less than, right? Like, yeah, less about than how. That. Like, think about something as popular as Doctor Who and how many lost episodes there are, with how, even though, yeah. with how popular it is. This would have just been one random pilot somewhere. Yeah, that's oh, that's, that's really sad to think about, because... Yeah, no, that's the I, worst timeline. I love, I love Star Trek, I, I grew up watching it, my dad watched it as a kid, and I, and I just, I just, I'm, I just love it. I, <laughs> And that's why we have you on for this series, because you and I will be talking about, uh, as, the, as the weeks go on, uh, maybe not every week, but as the weeks go on, you and I will be talking about Star Trek uh, TOS. Uh, we're starting yes. off with the two pilots because, in my opinion, they're so divorced from the show itself that we can talk about them freely without actually going in-depth into oh, yeah. the show. Yeah. But, um, and then, yeah, so you and I are talking about that, and then me and another host, a brand new host, are, are going to be coming on in the upcoming weeks to talk about TNG as well. So you and I will talk about TOS, he and I will be talking about TNG, and it'll be a very interesting experience, to say the least. So, but talking about uh, these pilots already, it's so strange the way, uh, talking about the cage in particular, it's so strange how the cage worked, and it's kind of funny because it was so... Uh, different than what Star Trek became in some aspects that I'm kind of okay. Like, even though I want to see more of Pike, I really do. Mm -hmm. In some respects, I'm okay with it just being the pilot and not really being... I know some clips of it were used in The Menagerie, but... Or it was... I forgot what the other episode title... Uh, like, cause it had two titles, I think, but like The Manhunt or something like that, but... Um, I know that the clips of this was used in, like, season three, but I'm happy, like, I'm okay with it being just some pilot. Like, even, even the, um, Where No Man Has Gone Before was a little awkward, like, just in terms of, like, the costumes and, like, no bones and everything, like, no, um, you know, McCoy. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was off, but, like, it still sort of fit in, but, like, even if Pike was Kirk, it still would just seem like a completely different ship not a different show like i can tell that it's star trek but it would be a completely different ship yeah almost like a different series altogether like voyager or deep space nine enterprise you know discovery yeah. a, a completely cetera, different ship yeah yeah exactly um so like what are, what are your thoughts on pike who who do you think of winning a fight uh pike or kirk i mean um i, I think i would say definitely kirk um, I, really? but you know what though? Uh, yeah, 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 I think so. But, um, I mean, I mean, Kirk punches more people, but, well, but I mean, we've he had, seen, he had, we've only seen Pike once. Maybe he punched yeah, more he, people he in had his spare more, time as a, he had as more a time to, he had more time to punch more people. Uh, exactly. Yeah, fair. exactly. But, um, but I actually, but I actually kind of, I, I really, I really liked Pike. 
Um, uh, however, I, I have to bring this up because I, I, this was going to, I think this was going to enter the conversation, uh, eventually. Um, my initial reaction to him was, okay, he's, he's pretty cool. He's not, he's not Kirk, but he's really cool. Um, until he said, I, I haven't gotten used to a woman on the bridge yet. That that really took me out well, of it. You know, it's funny. I was just talking and, to and, and it was the and it was the sixties and and you know and and all that. But at but, the no, same but... time, it was still. That but that's yeah, what what's so saying? interesting, yeah. Anthony. What's so interesting is I was talking to the other host, the one that's coming on uh, in the near future to talk about TNG, and he and I were discussing the idea that, you know, it sucks, but literally these shows are as progressive as when they were written. So it's just so strange to have such a progressive show. And I say progressive, there's some people out there who are going to be like, what do you mean progressive? How dare you? When you look at the makeup of the cast, compared to the time period they were in, in our time, like in real life, Star Trek was super fucking progressive, guys. Sorry. It was absolutely, it was absolutely progressive. Exactly. But but, but, but it's, it's so interesting, though, right? Like, a progressive show goes from... Goes from you know what's interesting, too, by the way? Sorry to interrupt. Just the one thing. I love how, like, they're sitting there like, we have to make things more progressive. We can't have Kirk be intimidated by women, but he's definitely going to fuck every single one in the galaxy. <laughs> so I love how it's shifted between, like, he's not, like, he's like, oh, of course a woman can work, you know, right next to me, and under me, and on top of me, and it's like, Kirk! <laughs> Sexual harassment! <laughs> but, uh, like, um, not at the workplace. I feel like a lot of the times, it was consensual. Well, no, 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 it was, it was. I'm just saying that, like, in general, in the <laughs> workplace, it's like, no, you, you have sex with green people outside of work, Kirk. Like, yeah. no one at the office, is it's, what I'm saying. It's still interesting, though, with Pike and how, yes, uh, th even even the the cage is, is pretty progressive, but you have this main character who we're supposed to uh, agree... Well, not agree... I wouldn't use the word agree with, but this main character connect. who... Connect with. You're supposed to, you know, at least not hate him as the main character. And he says something like that, it's it just well, you think it, it, you think that's bad it's flash at the end of the episode and literally he's saying oh shit you're an ugly chick all right i get it you yeah, should stay no. here yeah like they don't have any fucking technology on the ship that could rearrange her body parts like honestly yeah. like no because like the difference between pike and kirk is astounding where pike looks at her and he's just like well i guess we're not in love anymore and kirk would be like I know that everything has been rearranged, so I guess the question at hand is, where is the vagina? How? <laughs> where? It's where? not where it should be, but where is it actually? Is it the hump? Is it is it the hump? I'll take the hump. And it's like, Kirk! <laughs> Jesus, Kirk! Don't hump the hump! I wouldn't but, have uh, said that. I would have said, how do we rearrange it? <laughs> no, no, no. Kirk, I don't think Kirk would. Kirk has been with so many different types of women, he'd be like, I'm down. And it's like, okay, Kirk. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's the thing with Kirk. It's just like, it's so funny how we had a shift from, like, one drastic tone of masculinity to yeah. another for the time period. Like, either masculinity is women on the bridge. Mm -hmm. What's this whole affair thing going? To yeah. women on the bridge. Hell yes, yeah, son. And it's like, no, Kirk, please. <laughs> Kirk, please, no. And, um, and, just, to, and just to mention, uh, Captain Pike was actually in the uh, um star trek uh 2009 uh reboot oh right movie. it was 2009 i thought he it was, was 2007 Whoops. he was the yeah, yeah, um, yeah. you know he was his dad wasn't he well no he was he was the older he was his kind he was his, his kind of uh, mentor and oh. he was and he was saying to kirk you know you know, get your life together and things like that um which I, which i found interesting too and also captain pike is going to I mean, there's rumors online that that his character is going to be in Discovery in the the next season. Which oh I, God, that would be interesting. Which I haven't seen at all. I haven't seen Discovery. Neither have I. Yeah, neither have I. My question to you is, how do you feel about Number One? Because I love her concept as a character, but mm -hmm. I'm not a big fan of her actress. Well, she was um uh. 
She, 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 she her, I know who her, she was, yes. Her, yeah, okay. Her act, her actress was uh, uh, Roddenberry's wife, and also she's um, no. De- uh, Deanna no. Troy's mother. I was I was under the impression that he, she wasn't his wife. She was his girlfriend. Yes, I think when so. he Something had like that. a wife. Yeah, yeah. So he had a wife. Something like that. And it's that was like his that. girlfriend at the time, which uh, to boldly go where no man has gone before. Jesus Christ, holy infidelity, Batman. But you know what? I mean, <laughs> it was a good show. Like, and he wasn't yeah. in the show. Like, I don't know what to say about that. But the point is, is that he was um, pushing for her to be hired. And to be fair, again, as a character, I really, like, love that she exists. And yeah. I want more from her as a character and more from, like, I want a number one as, like, you know, like, um, as, a, like, a woman number one. Because in TNG, we have Riker, which I love Riker, but it would have been, in my opinion, I think it would have been nice if, like, Tasha was number one. Oh, yeah. But still, yeah. but still, right, I, I understand, like, I love this character, the idea of her, but the actress herself, like, it's one of those things where I know it's a low-budget affair in general, but sometimes when I hear her <laughs> okay. talk, when, it is, oh, God, Jesus Christ, no, but it's Sorry. a low-budget, I don't know, oh, I don't know <laughs> if their affair was low-budget, but when, when this, <laughs> I know that the show was filmed, it was low-budget, right? But my point is, is that, well, I know it's low-budget, oh, yes, budget. Very. Yeah, very, of course, especially this pilot. But my point is is that sometimes you think about when you hear someone speak in a movie or in a TV show, and yeah, there's time constraints and stuff, but sometimes you sit back and you think, wait, was that their best take? Was that yeah. actually their best take? And that happened with her at least twice. I so feel was, like... Yeah. I feel like everyone was... I, I felt an uneasiness because... Uh, with the entire cast, um, because they, they they felt like they didn't n- like know in what direction they were heading in. Uh, so I think I, I felt that like they were very cautious because they didn't know how to. I mean, not that they I, didn't know how, but well, no, but no, no, but you're right though. When you say you don't know how, you don't mean like oh they're not good actors or they don't. They don't act know how right to act. Or... Yeah, no. In, but they didn't not know that. how how to deal how with these to... characters. Yes, because it is some of their is their first times being as these characters, and also another thing too is that while sci-fi, of course, has been a thing for years, this is not the first sci-fi you know project yeah. to exist. But at the same time, though, there's also I would argue this idea that, and I'm not saying that all of these actors thought this way, but per- perhaps some of them did. The idea that sci-fi is schlock, right? That it's just some yeah. some project that you're getting paid for some kitty of you know some kitty thing right so the same way that uh and it's funny this isn't the first time i've mentioned star wars and star trek in the same conversation today i'm, lo- I'm gonna love how many people are gonna uh, love me bringing star wars into this but the idea that the actor i think i forgot his name i think it was like something mcginnis for um for the original obi-wan right he was not a fan of being obi-wan he was not a- a fan of being Guinness, in the movie yeah. alec guinness thank you he was really not a fan of being in it like he was like ah you know being on set and he thought it was just some kids picture and now when you're in a star wars not only are there people that are fans but you take that seriously you don't sit there and think oh i'm just in this movie right oh yeah absolutely i would imagine the same thing with star trek at the time where it was new it was different also it's a pilot so again they're trying to find their their way around these characters so I feel like Pike was pretty good in terms of, like, it felt like his actor knew what he was doing, sort of. Like, he had a direction. But you look at someone like Spock, yeah, who, because he's... We look at Leonard Nimoy as Spock, he wasn't in I, command I as a character. So really, he was yeah. doing nothing. Yeah, no, I, I was going to mention that, that Spock wasn't... I was That I was surprised that Spock wasn't as, uh, as important or as established, because... I actually don't know uh, at that point how much of the Vulcan lore had been established, like how much of how much you know Leonard Nimoy knew about it, right, uh, right, or or how much you know Roddenberry even knew about it because it was the first episode, and you could tell that he had he had some idea, but I noticed that he he smiled more than he does yes, in the... Yes, yes, yes. No, sp- yeah, and, he, and he, sh- he showed more emotion and things like that. 
which yeah, you, no, which you don't see in later. No. Yeah. Yeah, not at all. Not at all. You're absolutely right. I don't think they established that yet. I think their whole goal was, can we get this shit funded? That really, which is every pilot's goal. But they definitely were like, oh shit, let's see if we can fund this. And it wasn't so much about building a universe. And it's so interesting to think about that where, you know, nowadays... I mean, if something is an adaptation, it makes sense. But like, it feels like nowadays there's always this idea of like, and how are we gonna build this universe from the ground up? And like, it's so funny that back then, you know, it's just a show trying to just get a pilot fulfilled, you know. So yeah. they're not sitting there like, so how do we look at the Vulcans as a whole? Like that wasn't fucking thought about when it's just you know Pike and Spock and you know number one. Yeah. Right. So it was that was very interesting. Um, I I do think though, while I in some respects understand why this pilot wasn't picked up, I do think it is a little uh, frustrating. And I'll you know, and I feel like it's kind of like I want to make it like a, a joke about like you know the phrase cerebral with this pilot. Yeah. Like oh, it was too cerebral. Pre people won't get it. And it's kind of like I don't think it was that hard to get. I mean, maybe again, you know, first episode, maybe it wouldn't be the first. I guess I get, but like in in the I don't 60s, know. I would kind of understand, but um, yeah, I guess. I mean, I'll say this much: if you're trying to say, but we want the kids to watch, yeah, no, the kids might not watch. Sure, yeah, like maybe, yeah, this was I maybe this, this was pilot. Ever, I don't think it was ever aimed toward kids, though. I think it meant to be. I mean, uh, uh, family friendly, yes. Okay, family okay, friendly. that's fair. Well, well, okay, because sometimes. Yeah. But, you know what? All right, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Not the, not necessarily for children, but the reason why I say for kids is because obviously, just like your dad, my dad watched it when he was a kid, and so did this other host that we're bringing on. His dad as well. So a lot of our dads and moms watched this show when they were kids. Yes. So in my and you know, and the parents were around, and sometimes they would oh, yeah. watch. No, but I'm most not, likely they wouldn't. I'm not saying that. I'm saying, I, I'm saying specifically a children's show. It's not specifically a children's show it's not it's not like dora the explorer let's explore the thing well but there's a but that's also a different because remember something too technically doctor who started off as a children's show straight up children's educational let's go into different time periods that we want to teach kids about sort of through the doctor's eyes oh yeah and then that drastically was uh, you know it was a drastic shift the second they introduced daleks but even when they introduced daleks like two serials after they went to the french revolution yep so, with Doctor Who, that was still, like, the idea of, like... So, that's what I'm trying to say. Like, here, when I say kids show, I mean more so, like, they wanted to try to hit that boy demographic with all the punchiness as yeah. the... Which you can yeah. tell from the second pilot. Where in the first pilot, I feel like it, like kids were not even a thought. Or yeah. if they were. Or if they were, then you clearly had NBC being like, but kids aren't going to watch this, Gene. Right, <laughs> and Gene, like, and then with the uh, second I feel like they pilot, said that a lot. They were like, yeah, Gene, um. <laughs> yeah, just G, and then negative criticism that was wholly wrong, right? But it was like <laughs> Gene, and then with the second, uh, with the second pilot, they really, I think, went a little bit heavier. Even though in some ways they went with some material that. You didn't even get brought up today, like with the Esper stuff, uh, which we'll talk about a little bit later. But they definitely, with the second pilot, were much more like... And then Kirk's again into a big fight. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. yeah, and I really wanted to drive that home, like, as an action show. Which, in my opinion, I'm not saying that adults didn't watch those, you know, like, westerns and stuff like that. But still, I feel like when you say the phrase action show, it's someone trying to target a younger demographic and maybe not exclusively but because now but like it's the idea that like nowadays right we look at things as more like a family show with action and everything and you know it's not just for kids and everything but i think of it the idea of like back then was all sci-fi meant for adults like you had twilight zone sure which like had some more themes where you're like oh i don't know if like little the tiniest kid should be watching it but then again my dad watched that as well when he was a kid. So I don't know how to feel about, like, how, like, times have shifted with, yeah. you know, who things are meant for, really, at the end of the day. Because, you know, I mean, when you look at, even just looking uh, to Japan in current day, or even, like, 10 years ago or 20 years ago, 
there are some shows that we've gotten from Japan, like Adapted, that to us, they change certain aspects of it to be more kid-friendly to an American audience because when you look at it as a kid or as an adult from an American perspective, a Japanese kid show or a family show could seem like an adult drama based on what they allow them to see and watch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's that whole thing. Like, just not, like, cultural differences, not just, you know, in other countries, but even in other time periods where, like, looking at what was... Uh, like, was this a kid's show in the 60s or was this a family show in the 60s? Now, I know that families did watch this together, to be fair. My, you know, my grandma on my dad's side did watch this with him, to be fair, at some point. So, it's not like she, oh, yes. did, it's not like she hated Star Trek. But, I don't know if that was every family. That's all. Like, out of, did your, did your grandparents watch it with your dad? Um, I think my grandfather did. That's interesting. So I do wonder if they, if it was, although to be fair, what was, what was your grandpa going to do? Go on a smartphone? So I don't know if, it, I don't know if he liked Star Trek. Um, but, um, uh, yeah, I actually don't know that. Oh, that's interesting. Well, we'll talk about, you'll, you'll reconvene with your dad in the next podcast. We'll know. Yeah, I, I will. Um, I, yes, I, you'll yes, you'll yes. know by the next podcast. Exactly. More in, exactly. More information about, about, about Grandpa's. my, my, my family background, yes. With Star Trek. <laughs> because well, family ev background everyone with Star the Trek. want to know that. <laughs> yes, we do. We want to hear... What do you... They want to... I love it. Who wants to hear our opinions and backgrounds on a podcast? I don't know, Anthony. <laughs> Why does anyone want to hear us talk on a podcast, Anthony? Um, but, uh... Oh... <laughs> speaking of speaking of something, because uh, as you as all you guys know, long time listeners know, I'll have episodes on in the background as we talk about them, the same episodes that we're talking about, or movies or whatever. Uh, Spock looks a lot more demonic in the cage in this pilot. Like something about um, him looks a bit too like not even Vulcan. It's just like you look like you're a demon, Spock. They they I guess. Yeah, I guess they wanted him to look alien, and and that somehow came out as demon. I don't know. I, I don't know. <laughs> no, because I think it got toned down as the show went on. Maybe, like, yeah. I don't know if it's the ears, but, like, the eyebrows. Something about it seemed less absolutely terrifying. Yeah. Um, yes. One thing and I also he, want to mention... he smiled more, go figure. Yeah, right, which maybe that was more terrifying, too. Uh, one thing I want to mention, though, that I find interesting is... As the show actually solidifies itself in the second pilot and f going forward, it's so interesting how the show, like how the uh, how the ship, the Enterprise, how it looks more military, right? Uh, but looking at this first episode, it looks a lot more like there's places to sit down. There's a nice bed for Kirk to for for Pike to lay on. I mean, I'm not saying yeah. Kirk never had a bed. Believe me, Kirk Kirk has <laughs> known a lot of beds, but. It's just the idea that it looks the the ship looks more comfortable in a way, more homey. It, it felt like it felt more like ground control. What do you mean it, by it, that? It felt like it felt to me like they weren't in space. They were like, you know, like in the in the NASA computer room. Yes, actually. that's what it felt so, to me. So then, and so, so then, to be fair, not so then, not exactly much to my point, which is like, oh, it felt like more like a home, but to you, it felt more like it was grounded, yeah. not in space. It where felt like some, it was, yes, the the because it didn't feel the didn't original feel pilot. Yeah, the original pilot was more ground control, and the um, the uh, uh, the second pilot was more Major Tom. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's that's actually what's funny is. That's not even shoehorned. It just makes sense. Yeah. Actually, uh, so that was that was good. Um, <laughs> the no, but it really was though. Like it makes a lot of sense. Uh, I want to see more from Pike because he's so different than Kirk. I mentioned that a little bit earlier, but the one the reason why I'm bringing it up again that I find interesting is the fact that uh, with Pike. You know, they start off the show immediately, which, by the way, is another reason why I think the show didn't get picked up uh, with this pilot. It starts off immediately with him being like, man, I'm getting tired of running this ship. And I'm like, that's something I imagine you'd see, like, in an 80s, 90s, 2000s, like, cynicism, kind of. Oh, yeah. Like, uh, like, like, I would not imagine that kind of cynicism in the 60s. I found that kind of, I found that kind of weird because it's like... 
knowing all we know about Star Trek now, it's like a Starfleet captain wouldn't exactly say that. Yeah, especially because it's the first episode. That's the thing for me. You know, it's like it's the first episode that this that this guy is being shown in. It's the first, not even first episode, first episode of this entire franchise before he was even thought of as being a franchise. First episode. And yet we have him saying that. I'm like, dang, like, that's something you do in, like, you know, I'd expect another captain to do later on during the series. And I know, so, like, yeah. in different series. And, or it's something I'd imagine Kirk would say in season two or season three, like, man, it's been so long. Or pro- possibly even in one of the movies or something, you know? Like, oh, it's been so long. I've been doing this for so long. So it's so funny to see him do that and to say that now. Yeah. Right? Like, for him to just say that in the first episode. So I think that actually added on to why maybe the show didn't get picked up. I think they wanted something that was a bit more clean and sterile and not really shaking, like, rocking the boat at all. Like, no, he's a military man. He's, he's, he's not going to want to, you know, go AWOL and desert his post. He's, he's you know, say he's a captain, damn it. Like, I feel like that might have played into it a little bit. Oh, yeah. Maybe I it's think just me. I do yeah. think it was um, the the mentality was more polished when they when they got into the uh actual series well the actual series i don't know what to call i don't know what to call it what do you mean like tos like the original series or you mean like post you want to call it post pilot yeah post pilot um, i like that i'm going to use yeah. that <laughs> yeah right star trek pp wait that that'll get censored by something okay that'll, that'll get awkward but um but oh by the way speaking of Speaking of something that I don't know, resem- smells like urine. I don't know the the when when Pike was fighting that random. They called it a beast, but it was just a dude with bad teeth. It was so oh, odd. Yeah. Like it was a Viking. No, because here's the thing. I have no problem if they're like, oh no, it's a Viking man, and I'm like, all right, that's fair. This is Star Trek. It's some weird shit, right? But they sat there and they were like, oh no, it's a beast, and I'm just like, it, it's a dude. It's a dude who's a Viking with a sword. <laughs> I'm okay with it, but why are you gonna call him a beast? Like I was sitting there and I was like, just use the one of the costumes from the ship that Pike was on. Well, any like, anything, anything, anyone that doesn't look like you is automatically a beast. Uh, I know. <laughs> well, I mean, it's funny. That's how. That's what they tied in later on in the episode. Like, oh no, Vera, you're a beast. Like, by the way, I love how the aliens are, like, so... I mean, technically everyone on the show is an alien in some form or another. But I love how, like, the big cranium aliens, they're just like, yeah, we did not know how humans looked like. And it's just like, um... You're kind of humanoid enough. Like, yeah. you... You're humanoid enough that I would imagine you'd know that she shouldn't have a hump there. Yeah. Could you, like... I mean, granted, she was a baby, so they couldn't, like, see her thoughts. It's interesting. I don't know what's worse. I thought she was going to be old, and I thought they were going to run with she's, like, 80. I, didn't know, I don't know what's worse, if she was old or the fact that she's deformed, and that's, and that's Pike's reason for being like, oh, shit, you should stay here. Yeah. I don't know what's worse. I mean, I think, I think both. <laughs> Yeah, either one would have been bad. Doesn't matter which one you go for. Um, but yeah, how did you feel about, you know, Pike being tempted by, not like this woman, but by these ideals, by this, you know, this this familiarity, this sense of being home? Because as a plot, I love it. And the plot itself, I think, for me, I'm like, oh, this should have been picked up because the plot is really good. It's just very yeah. hard for me to connect with, pike in the sense not just for the stuff that you've mentioned because of it too but also because of the fact that again we're just meeting this man and he's just like i don't want to do this anymore oh no will i not do this anymore and i'm like dude we just met like yeah could we could i I see um, you on a few other adventures before you become disillusioned that's exactly what i was gonna say i was gonna say that you know that episode you know if if that pilot uh if, if, if there would have been, a, yeah, if it was picked up, that particular episode I think would have been good after a few episodes, like a few episodes in. Yeah. And then, um, but there would have been a different pilot, and that wouldn't have made sense. But. Well, no, 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 no. Remember, if this pilot was picked up, there wouldn't be a second pilot, so it would have made sense. 
Like, they would have gone with Pike, not Kirk. They would have gone with number one. Maybe a different yeah. woman cast, but they would have went number one. They would have went with Spock. So, like, yeah, it would have... It, this would have worked as, like, an episode five, six, seven, a bit later on. Yeah. Uh, if this was the pilot that was picked up. And uh, I was... Another and I thing was, I want to... Yeah. And it actually Please surprised go. me that, uh, that, that a woman was even number one in the original pilot. And it was interesting to me how that then was changed... Well, into yeah, I think into, into Spock being, you know the yeah. the, the first officer, and I you know, and I and I, just, sad. and I wanted to bring that up because I I, th I think I really liked the idea of that, but yeah, no, I was saying it earlier too. The concept is a great concept, and I wish they had retained it. I sadly think though that despite the fact that I do believe the stories that she wasn't a good actress because also we could see her on screen yeah. right so even though i felt yeah, like I do she got better stories, though i felt like she got well, better though with I mean, we next don't generation and th what do you mean she got better she, she was in as, a, she, as an actress she was a uh, um uh troy's mother in next generation oh okay so then yeah i mean she had the time to you know she had the time to um and she was the voice of all of the computer stuff Oh, right, right. She did the so voice of that. Yes. Also, another thing, too, by the way, sometimes people are just miscast. So, like, she could easily be someone's mom, maybe someone else in a position of authority, but, like, the yes. fact that she had to, like, speak with such conviction in some of these, uh, with some yeah. lines in this episode, it didn't really come off as convincing. But, yeah, no, you have a 20-year gap. I'm sure she's great as Troy's mom. So, in that regard, yeah, like, I'm sure she's a lot better 20 years later, you know? But at the time... Yeah. She was a little iffy. And I think another thing, too, and this is just a sad thing. This I don't think... Like, okay, so I haven't actually heard this as, like, an actual fact. It's just me looking at the time period and me looking at the executives and having a strange feeling that they said, Listen, she has to go. Otherwise, this second pilot isn't going to work. And even though I think that, that I heard about, but I don't think the only reason why they didn't want her being in command was because she wasn't the best actress. I think there were other reasons, and we can all understand, sadly, what those reasons are due to the time period that it was. Yeah. Yeah, and that's what's really sad about I it. I mean, that, However, that, though, that, that might not have been its go-to thing. It's like, oh, she can't be in command because she's a woman. I don't, that might not have been the go-to thing. It, it might have been her acting or whatever it was, but yeah, that yes. is... Well, I think the act... You know what it is? I think the acting was just... A good excuse. Now, again, I'm not saying that she should get a job just because she's a woman. Of course not. But I do think that the acting was a great way for them to be like, oh, thank goodness, we didn't want a woman in command. And she's a terrible actress. Perfect. Because then what other reason would they have? Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? They have to be like, hmm. So in my head, and again, I'm not saying that that's the way things are today or anything like that. It's just for the time. And heck, they even had, maybe that was their way of thinking, oh, men out there will think this. So let's have Pike say it. And try to be that you know connection to the to the to the average man, but yeah. it just felt odd to have Pike even say that. I mean, a that. lot of what I was gonna bring up too is that the reason that didn't surprise. I mean, it took it took me out of it because I'm I'm living in 2018, but uh, the the reason it didn't surprise me is because a lot you look at a lot of old science fiction novels uh short stories uh the pulp magazines and stuff like that a lot of that was very sexist yeah you yeah. have you have um um uh, the novel starship troopers uh starship troopers by uh robert heinlein and the main character uh talks about how uh, um that he's not against women pilots of ships but they they make the I forgot the actual quote, but it's like they uh, they make the ship shake too much, or, or something like that. And it's well, just and it's just okay. a but you know yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's, you it's know just like like they're not focused enough or something like that. It, oh, but Jesus. it's uh, but things like that are always there in in old science fiction. Yeah, what I think is really funny is, and I was saying this joke to someone the other day. I forgot. Uh, when I not the other day, but it was like at least a good two weeks ago, and it was so funny because I said the phrase, "No one," I I have to say, almost no one, when they say the phrase, "I'm not against X, whatever it is," but never is the but like, but they're also great people too. 
Like it's never. Oh yeah. It's always no. It's always like I'm not against X, but and then you just prove that you're against X, and I love it. Like I don't love it like in real life, but like it's just so funny when you hear it. Like it's you love, just like you love I'm the, not ag- uh, the yes. ironic. Uh, uh, in, uh, <laughs> the the ironic position. Oh, it, yeah. Yeah. Oh, by the way, so one thing that was absolutely horrifying. Another. So it's funny, right? Where uh, another thing about, like this <laughs> pilot. No, no, because it is horrifying. Uh, <laughs> something that I loved in the episode. This actually I enjoyed. So in um, in the cage, it's funny because you have you have these. I assume these NBC censors or these NBC um, executives looking at the cage, and they're like, "All right, we have to see what can be considered marketable in this, CBS. and you know, and what's a oh oh was CBS? Why did I think it was NBC? I don't know. Huh? Why the fuck did I think it was NBC? NBC has never carried Star Trek? Uh, not that I know of. Shit. It, as, as, far as, I, as far as my knowledge goes, it was always CBS. Huh. Well, I know that CBS, like, they, they you know, it, uh, they, they have the rights, of course, it's on CBS All Access, Paramount, everything. Fuck. I don't know oh, why yeah. I've been thinking it's been NBC for a certain amount of time. Anyway, uh, the point, though, is, where I'm getting at here is, these CBS executives, thank you for correcting me, these CBS executives are trying to see what's marketable uh in the show what they can you know what what the kids might like what the adults might like and it's just so funny where they're just like we need some more violence and then they see pike burning alive and they're like not that kind of violence yeah no that was absolutely horrifying like seeing him burn and the fire no 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 but it was good but it was horrifying it was good but it was, yeah. wasn't that absolutely scary as hell? Like, imagine being six years old and or eight years old and watching that on television. Yeah. Like, holy shit. And and, and that's <laughs> that's what made me say before to saying that it wasn't meant to be for children. It's like the in a children's show, not a lot of people are burned alive. I could but be remember, wrong about the, that. But remember, but this is the pilot that didn't get picked up. Is what I know. I'm saying. Yeah. That's what I'm getting at. And it's like, you know, you can't that, like, have a you can't have a man burning alive and expecting yeah. a kid to Yeah. What what if it was a person in a lizard costume? There we go. Now that makes sense. But a man? No. <laughs> but uh but um so yeah, the the magistrate, these these interesting uh these aliens, quote unquote, again hard to call them that, who isn't an alien on this show. But they were very interesting because I don't, I still don't feel like I know what their end game was, and I think that's also another issue where, when it with this pilot, where, and it's funny too because I don't hate the pilot. I don't think it's like a steaming pile or anything like that. It's just that it's one of those things where I'm trying to see like what, why this wasn't considered like the end all be all, like why this shouldn't have been Star Trek. And I think one of the biggest issues in trying to be more relatable to you know the mass, you know, not be so cerebral. Uh, is the fact that it didn't feel like they were... Vi- At first, it felt like they were villainous. Then as the episode went on, they weren't villains, but then there was no direct person to actually try to hate or fight against. Yeah, which which I personally love that, but I guess in, in the 60s and when you're looking at a... when you're looking at a, a science fiction where you... The, the producers were probably thinking, oh, you probably need a villain or you probably need someone to hate or you something like that. Yes. Yeah. I definitely and I understand. Like, and, I, and I think as the series went on, there were certain episodes that were a bit more like, oh, this person isn't as bad as we thought. Or, oh, this person isn't like the devil incarnate, right? But it felt like in many of the episodes, there was at least some person who would be considered the bad guy. Even if they were yeah. good and then were turned bad, like in Where No Man Has Gone Before, where you had, you know, ESP, right, the thunderstorm, whatever, turn a mild-mannered man who was a, a good friend of Kirk back in the day. You know, now all of a sudden is just a fucking god, right? So he turned into a bad guy, arguably. Mm. So yeah. that's the thing, right? Like they had to find ways to turn some of these, you know, characters either into bad guys or they've been bad guys or whatever. So I think with this pilot, they just wanted to have a central villain and not getting one. They were maybe a little frustrated by it. 
Um, again, I you're right though. Uh, like you liked it, and I also liked it as well. But I don't. Also, another thing too. I don't think it's episode one material. Like this script in general is definitely something that if it came mid season after a show was picked up, after you know season two, season three, four, whatever it might be, um, maybe even a movie. I think this is a great script for that. But to be considered oh, yes. like, oh, this is what we're selling you on. This is what the entire show is going to be about. Yeah. You know, I pi don't know. Pilots are really pilots are really are really tricky Odd. because it's like yeah. you 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 have to you have to explain what the show is going to be about, but you can't be like you, it still has to be a it still has to be a, a good story by itself in order for people to to keep watching yeah. it. So it's it's yeah. like I I don't know how you do I don't know how how to write a pilot yet. <laughs> no 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 it's no it's very hard to try to write a pilot because you can in my opinion almost I don't say almost anyone but people can write an episode one of a show if you're doing like a, a show on your YouTube channel or you're someone who is already established so no matter what they're like we'll pick up the whole season don't worry about it right. So it's very, yeah. like, in other words, like, looking at the new Lord of the Rings show that's coming to HBO. I don't know anything right? about that. I, I, but my, no, yeah. no, but my point is, my point is this. No one's going to look at that show and be like, all right, just write the pilot and then we'll see if the rest of the show is going to get picked up. Oh, absolutely. It's, <laughs> HBO paid, what, millions of dollars for the rights to that? They're making oh, yeah. the whole I think it's fucking like... show. <laughs> like. Yeah, they're, and, they're not like, going to get canceled after the pilot. Yeah. So in this case, and also another thing too, by the way, I've noticed, and this isn't like I, someone argues this is true of any pilot, but not always the case. In this show, it feels like, and maybe this is all, everything back then, but definitely in this show, it felt like they wanted to have a pilot that had the ability to also fit in during syndication or while the show was airing later on. So they didn't want to make a pilot that seemed so off that it couldn't try to slide its way in somehow. Yeah. And that's how we ended up getting a cut down version of, you know, where no man has gone before as like episode three or episode yeah. two, which is like, wait, what? That's odd. You know? Yeah. Because it looked no because Kirk and everyone else had like turtlenecks and we were missing half the cast after seeing one episode with them that wasn't a pilot. And then all of a sudden we get to the, the second pilot in air date. And you're like, what the fuck? Like, this is odd. Um, it's kind of <laughs> funny. But um, but no, but uh, my, my whole thing is, so like they had to make a pilot that could fit in easily, but maybe not be the first episode. And that's kind of what this episode of, you know, being the cage was. It was not a first episode material, but it definitely could have fit into any random episode if it was chosen. Oh, by the way, speaking of the differences, differences between Pike and Kirk, just straight up, how funny is it? Pike literally sees a green woman, and he's just like, get out of here, I must find these other aliens so I can try to hurt them. To be fair, he is quite punchy, to be fair, kind of like Kirk. But yeah. how funny is it that he's like, get out of my way, where Kirk would be like, I'll punch them after the sex. <laughs> like, like, a green, come on, a green woman giving Kirk a f one look, she wouldn't be giving him a second look. He'd already be with it. He'd already be right there. Yeah. Yeah, like, I mean... Like, it's so funny. And, the differences and, you know, between these two characters. And if, uh, I feel like Kirk is also... Um, I mean, uh, th this is not the right word, but un undisciplined compared to pike pike seems more like he has it he has a uh, um well i'm not gonna say has it together but do you know what i'm trying to kind of say he ain't nothing but a hound dog yeah i think that's no uh the way i see it is this right and i know it's been a while since i've seen um like the actual show so post pilot uh, it's been a while but it felt like at least in the first season it was some of Kirk's earliest rendezvous being yeah. on the Enterprise. So with Pike, just the way they start off the episode, right, the pilot, it feels like he's like, I've been doing this for too long. 
So, like, he's had his days of, you know, being with green women, if he was even like that at all. But even oh, yeah. then, he seems like, it's very interesting, both of them seem like country boys. But Pike seems like the country boy of, like, hey, listen, you know, I just want to settle down, be a family man, you know, yeah. maybe live my life yeah. with, with some nice cows and some horses. Where Kirk is just like, hey, Kirk I want to get out of here and see the hustle and bustle of the big city. Yeah, he, he yeah, Kirk definitely was the seemed younger of the two like younger in spirit yeah no he he most definitely did and i think that is what's most interesting is like they both still seem like country boys but <laughs> different but d different aspects of the country like wh i want to get out of the big city versus i want to come back here and settle down with with a family yeah which, uh, which makes it really yeah. interesting how in uh the 2009 movie where pike was uh where, where where Pike was the one to tell Kirk, you know, you you got to get your life together. You have gr you have you have an amazing potential. You could be a you could be a Starfleet captain even, you know. But yeah, you just can't yeah. you can't just be an f up. <laughs> and it's interesting because while I do think yes, you are taking, and I'm sure some people are gonna love in the comment section below. Why are you taking characterization from the movie? It's not canon to the. And you're right. They're right. But at the same time, we don't get, it's hard to get much of Kirk in the main, you know, the original series because there's only three yeah. seasons of it. Sure, there's well, a the, bunch of other, um, there's a bunch well, the of movies, other novels. The, the movies, the, the, the newer movies uh, are canon. They just take place in a, a separate timeline. But they're not canon to TOS in that regard because TOS is a different timeline. Slash universe, yeah. whatever you want to call it. No, no, no. But what yeah. I'm saying is that's not the same Kirk is what we're is what I'm trying to get at. So like you calling Kirk, which you're not wrong in, in bringing that into you know into light. But like just people being like, yeah. no, it's not the same Kirk, and it's just true. But also, it's no, I know it's much... not. I know it's yeah. not the same Kirk. No, but it. But yes. like I was just saying, it, it's really funny the juxtaposition yeah, yeah, yeah. of that. Yeah. Exactly. But no, but I'm also saying, personally, it's hard to even talk much about Kirk because when I, the, like, the clips of the movies that I've seen, it seems like he went from being the Kirk from TOS, who is very much, you know, uh, this, you know, this very, very energetic gentleman, I'll just put it lightly, uh, <laughs> to then being very, very stoic and very much like the captain that, you know, he could be. Yeah. He's, right? he's, uh, he's yeah. very complex, and I think that's what I love about him, is that he, yeah. he has his reckless moments, and, but he also has his militaristic uh, 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 d uh, demeanor about him. And it's, I just, he's, he's, he's human. Like, he's yeah, a human but it's being. Just so, yeah, but it's just so interesting to see like, the, the difference between not just the two of them, but also between Picard as well. Right, just you know, we'll talk about more TNG next week on the show, with, you know. But still, oh, yeah. it, it's but still, it's very interesting how like there's such a big difference between you know how again Picard, even though it's his first time on that ship, it feels like it's it isn't his first rodeo. But with Kirk, oh, I'm yeah. not saying Kirk was just right out of the academy or anything, but like you know in TOS canon. But still, it does feel like it's an earlier voyage. In some respects, but yeah. again, it depends on. It also depends on what episode you're looking at. Funnily enough, because some of them you're like, no, he's clearly been doing this for a while. But other ones, it feels <laughs> like he hasn't. It really, de again, it really depends on what episode you're looking yeah. at. Funnily enough, um, but uh, but yeah. So uh, talking about, I think we can move on from the cage and kind of mm -hmm. briefly start talking about a bit more of like where no man has gone before. Uh, so anything else you want to talk about with the cage in particular? Anything that stuck um, out to you? Because I, I think we've... I mean, I don't know what else to talk about other than, like... It's just, all I can think of is just, like, literally, you guys should have the technology to make her not, you know... To make her more human. Like, what are you doing? Yeah, but, uh, yeah, I agree with that. But, uh, but anyway, but other than that, anything you want to say about it before, mm -hmm. we, before we move on here? Um, nothing that's coming to mind, all right. So if it, if oh, yeah. it pops up, we'll we'll talk about it. In if a it second. pops up, we'll just we'll just switch. Uh... We'll just yeah, we'll just switch gears immediately. Um. So yeah. So let's talk about because that's what no we do man... here. Yeah, we're we're extremely structured. Where no man has gone before. So I um this one obviously more of a proper Star Trek episode with Kirk and all that. I mean, it was so proper that they actually were able to cut it up and put it into the series proper early on. 
Um, <laughs> but I have a question though. Have you seen the uncut version? Because I have not been able to to see that. Um, I don't know if the version on the DVD is the uncut version. Well, is it longer than fifty minutes? Um, I or don't know. Believe it is okay. Because oh, okay. Because no. Because there's one. I think in okay. Because then... I think in no. Because here's the thing. I heard that on the season three DVD disc set, or whatever part of that set it is. I heard that for season three they had the uncut version as a special feature. That's what I thought, but maybe I'm wrong. Um, but um, I know that. Yeah, I don't I know about that actually. Yeah, I, I, okay. I'm not sure Whoops. about that. <laughs> then maybe he does have it. Um, but uh, oh, speaking of Spock being more like a demon, maybe I was wrong about the cage. But dude, <laughs> in no, but in where no man has gone before. He straight up looks like, like, it looks like everyone looking at Kirk is like, Kirk, who are you talking to? Like, what do you mean? That's my friend Spock over there. Uh, Kirk, we found a pentagram in your room. Have you been, have you been talking to the devil, Kirk? <laughs> have you been talking to Satan? This is, this is why, this is why everyone calls Star Trek, uh, demonic, because... Well, I mean, that, along fault. with the science, yeah... Yeah. Oh, science is just. Oh. Th that that science is just science is is literally the devil. It's like poisoning everyone's minds. Yeah, well, not, like you don't, not their you don't... minds. It's poisoning their faith. Oh yeah, yeah. You don't. <laughs> you don't. You don't do science if you expect to. Be a good person. Jesus. Oh okay. You don't do science if you expect to Jesus. Um. <laughs> so speaking. But let's let's talk about the, something interesting in the episode itself uh, with this pilot. No, so you can science. Escrows. You can science and Jesus. You can, you can, but according to some people, you can't. <laughs> so, but I have a, I have a question for you. So, do you know what an esper is, Anthony? E S P E R. Do you know what an esper is? Uh, a some a summoner, a summon thing, a magic well, thing. No, no, because but no, but that's the thing. No, it was the the. Um, the f old, you know, Captain Kirk's friend in this episode, he became an esper due yeah. to that thunderstorm, right? Yeah, that's but what... But that's... Yes. Th that's what I... So, yeah, that's what... That's what w would first come to mind when you when you say esper. Um, I, I really didn't... I really didn't get that in this. <laughs> well, but here's what's... In well, because here's what's very interesting and why it was so uh, strange to me. Esper... Okay, so usually in the U.S., people take the word esper, they throw it away, and they take the idea of what espers represent in fiction, and they just attribute yeah. that to someone being psychic. Yeah. So, in other words, in U.S. media, usually when it's like, oh, no, that person just moved that, you know, that vase from ac you know, across the room with their mind, they have psychic powers. They yeah. don't use the word esper. They use psychic. But it's so interesting that uh, this long ago, they didn't use the word psychic. They used the word esper, which is a word that has still to this day been used in anime to refer to people with powers that would be considered in the U.S. psychic yeah. and even more than that. So in a lot of anime, they'll be like, oh no, that character over there, that, you know, super-powered character, or if she is like, they're a bad guy or if they're a good guy, and they'll be like, who are, like, what kind of powers do they have? Or like, what are they? And someone will be like, oh, they're an esper, not a psychic. Because, again, the idea of being a psychic is also used for, like, you know, telling the future, like a fortune teller. So yeah. it's, it's so interesting yeah, that... Yeah, they're different, yeah. Yeah, they are different, psychic and having psychic powers, quote unquote, and being an esper. But the word esper has kind of been dropped from the, in my opinion, from the English language uh, when it comes to media. And it's used exclusively in terms of, oh, this person has psychic powers. So maybe like in, I don't know, in, like the, in, in Stephen King's novel Carrie, maybe he says that she's an esper, perhaps. But I feel like in the film, they just say that she has psychic powers. Or they don't even say it outright. We just assume, oh shit, she has psychic powers. And not anyone going, oh, oh yeah. dang, she's an esper. Like, no one would well, call a, Carrie an esper. Doesn't she have t telekinetic? I feel See, like t thing. telekinesis but, and psychic is are two different things. They are, but people put telekinesis under the psychic banner for years now. Yeah, that would make it's that become would make part sense. of the lex. It's become part of the lexicon when really it's actually under the esper 
uh, kind of telekinesis. Like, it's kind of like a drop down of being an esper. Like, oh, you have telekinesis, you can do this, you can do this, all this weird shit that uh, his friend can do. Which, his friend, that was so interesting. Where, like, apparently, again, even though this is a pilot, I get it, but, like, we're in the future, we have all this interesting technology, and apparently this guy becomes an esper, and it's like, we can't do anything else about him, he's a fucking god. And it's like, yeah. well, shit, did no one know about this before traveling to where no man has gone before, that every once in a while someone can become a god? That's pretty. Well, fu that's a pretty big fucking oversight. Well, they, they probably wouldn't, because a lot of... Because here's the thing with Star Trek. A lot of... St Star Trek, was, uh, it was... A lot of what they're seeing... A lot of the things that they're seeing in on, on other planets, the aliens they're encountering and stuff like that, most of that they didn't know about before. They had no I know, idea. Yeah. This I had, is literally them exploring. This is what this mission is all they fucking had, about. They had exploring. no idea. They had no idea that something could get on the ship and it could affect a crew member in some way. They would have no idea because... Because th because they're they're seeing all this for for the first time and they're uh, there's a lot of things that they ha don't know so that didn't really bother me actually no 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 you're absolutely right for me it's just that um it's also because of the fact that like even though it's their first time seeing it you're right it's just something that you would imagine would happen already to someone that's the whole thing because you know I mean I know it's a pilot and I know it's the you know the first thing you're ever seeing of Star Trek like anyone should be right because again it's a pilot uh, but the idea is that like it's I don't know how to word it it's not like Kirk is the only ship out there it's not the Enterprise that's the only ship that's out there but again okay. in terms of you know this pilot and it existing it is the only one out there you know what I'm saying like it, we don't know much about there being a Federation yet like it's a fucking pilot so. I know I'm becoming a nitpicker here, but it's to become a god is a huge thing. Like, not just, oh, we have powers. Like, to go above and beyond, oh, I have some powers. That's yeah. a lot. You know? Oh, that's, yeah, no, that's my, I, no that's I understand that. But, um, you know, if it, it would be the same thing as if, uh, uh, if we, we somehow built a, if, you know, if it's in the future, we've been to Mars already, we've explored most of our solar system, and we somehow found a black hole at the end of our, yeah, of, our exactly. of our solar system, and we ended up completely somewhere else, and just, like, something, you know, came on our ship and turned us into a god. You know, it could, and I'm not saying it could happen, but I'm saying we wouldn't know what the hell is going on if that were of to course. happen. And you, yes. could, you could become a god from something like that. We don't know. Right. It's just that they mentioned, I think they, if I remember correctly, they mentioned espers early in the episode or something about the storms being problematic. Yeah. Didn't they do that? Like, oh, those storms can be a big a bit of an issue. Yeah. So it seems like they kind of knew that the storms were a problem for people's health, that it could, you know, like, change them a bit. Not, again, not turn into gods, I guess. You're yeah. right. But it, but it was interesting. Now, my question to you is, and maybe I just wasn't paying attention. I was writing notes. Maybe that's on me. If so, whoops. When, like, I, I assume it happened during the during the uh, thunderstorm, or during that, you know, that issue there. But out of nowhere, the woman is also a god alongside him. Like, what was that about again? Because, again, maybe my brain is fried. Because it felt like, was that supposed to be, like, some big twist that I was like, oh, no, that no we never saw that coming. Or was that foreshadowed and I'm an idiot? Um, I think that, I think she, she, like, made contact with him. Like, mm. he, he made contact with her somehow, and that, that's how that happened. That's, that's, that's how I, that's how I saw it, but. Okay. No, because, like, she didn't have, I like, cause I, in my head I was like, did she have the powers from the beginning and it was all an act every time we saw no, them No, I don't think she, I don't think she had the powers from the beginning. I think she, oh, okay. I think she acquired it through him or something, uh, like, from, from her, like, making contact with him. Okay. Oh, like, physical contact. Yeah, if, if I remember correctly. Okay, that's fair, that's fair. Um, I say that's fair in this show. Fuck it, sure. Um, why, why the <laughs> hell not? Um... I think it's interesting looking at the sets compared to, uh, you know, because looking at the deck, it looks very much, like, futuristic. But again, when we go to, like, some of the other areas, it does look like we're dealing with 
uh, the 60s, which is kind of funny because it's like, I know we are, no shit. But it's just very interesting how, like, you know, some set pieces, and I'm not even talking about, like, you know, practical effect pieces where, like, oh, that's the backdrop or something. Like, no, that's obvious. That's just a budgetary concern. That's fine. But just the idea of, like, you know, some of the, the furniture or even some of the stuff that people are wearing uh, that aren't wearing, you know, the turtlenecks. I'm sitting there and I'm like, why are you dressed like a 60s go-go dancer? <laughs> we couldn't get that person a turtleneck too? Like, what are we... <laughs> well, but, I think... Um, yeah. I mean, it was an honest interpretation of what the future w was going to be like. Yeah, right? Um, but no, actually, you have a good point about the whole making contact thing. Good point. Um, about, like, you know, her having power that's as well. That's how... That's how yeah. I saw it. I'm not saying that that's the only interpretation of what happened. No. I... no. No, 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 But, like, it makes sense because it's kind of weird that she would, like, be playing coy. And then out of nowhere, she'd be like, oh, good. Now we know. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Also, it's very interesting that they had the whole, like, Adam and Eve thing going on. That was very interesting. Eating the apple. Yeah. Or, like, what I looks like, like an apple. Yeah. It was, it was interesting. Um, it was... It was very strange, because, like, I don't know what... Like, what were we... I guess we were supposed to hate him because he's becoming God, but, like, he didn't... Like, he never really seemed like a big threat to me until James is like, you know, I'm going to kill him. And he can hear his thoughts, so he's like, yeah, I kind of hear that you're going to kill me. <laughs> like, was he going to be this huge threat that we were supposed to worry about? Because, like, to me, it came off as... Kirk is like... I'm going to fucking kill you. And it's just like, uh, you don't have to. No, I'm pretty sure I do. Yeah. I mean, All right. if, if, I mean, if he, you know, if he becomes, you know, if he has like too, too much power or like the power of a God, you know, I could understand a little concern. bit why you would. Well, no, I understand concern. concern yeah. But the idea is, like, they, I don't think they ever expressed in detail, Ah, oh, man, I want to kill all of you. Yeah. Like, it just seemed like they were like, we're just learning a lot of shit together, and we're better than you, but it never came off, and maybe it's just me, and maybe I didn't read a line right, or I misheard a line, but it yeah. never felt to me that, Mitchell was going to actually destroy humans or humanity. Like no, it felt I think like humans were. I mean, maybe he would, but it didn't feel like he, Elizabeth he might would. have. He might have meant to control them or maybe so, but like, something never, like that. Yeah, I don't know. Because like, the thing is, it's it's everyone on the ship who was like, "So what are we gonna do with Mitchell?" And and then like one person, like Spock, was like, "We kind of know what's wise." captain and then after yeah. mitchell was like hey if i was in your position i'd kill me too in fact eventually i'll be the only one that can kill me haha <laughs> oh isn't that interesting i'm gonna be a god but it never felt like his <laughs> godlike powers were going to be like it's funny it's like it's a bit like later on versions like later versions of godzilla where like in like early versions of godzilla godzilla was like i'm gonna destroy the city later versions was like why are you guys shooting at me? I'm just trying to get some sleep. Yeah. So it felt like in this episode, funnily enough, I don't know, maybe I'm just me, man. It felt like Mitchell's just like, hey, I want, I love this woman. Elizabeth is like, I think you're okay. Mitchell's like, yeah, you're like really cool and I love you so much. Elizabeth is like, you're my best friend. You're like a brother to me. Oh, Mitchell's like, hmm. But anyway, <laughs> all jokes aside, right, uh, the two of them are into each other, question mark, and, you know, there's this whole Adam and Eve thing, and they both have powers, but it, you know, but it like, felt like Mitchell was like, look, I just want to go off on a random planet, and I want to God bang this woman. Before it would have, before, before it would have been normal. Now, <laughs> it's funny, literally just having Kirk and the rest of them, if they had sex, yes, the universe would then implode and explode. At the same time. Essentially causing humanity to be stopped and started again. As if nothing went wrong. And there'd be, be a new pilot. 
but we'd feel it for, and his name would be Pike. We'd feel it for a split second, and it would be weird. Like, I feel like, like, there's nothing, I don't know, like, it just felt like Mitchell was like, I want to go off to a random planet. This is going to be hot. It's just going to be the two of us. Yeah, and, you, you, you have, you're not wrong. You, you have a point. But I'm, yeah, but I'm just, like, but, but, but part of me still feels like he was still a threat somehow. Oh, well, no, he was threatening. But remember, he was threatening, at least in my opinion, when Kirk is trying to kill him. Which, I mean, anyone will be or seem threatening when you're trying to kill them. Oh, yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but I do understand the moral of, like, absolute power corrupting absolutely, which was literally a line of yeah. the episode, so I'm not fucking... I think, I think that here. was the... I think that was the point. It's just that the technicalities like, got a little... I know, it's just it's a problem because, like, he didn't choose the... He didn't... We didn't start the fire. He didn't choose the power. The power chose it. Now I, feel like I'm talking about, now I feel like I'm talking about thug life. No, but like he didn't choose to be this powerful. Like this was given to him through a freak accident. So what we're actually saying is the X Men should kill themselves. Like you know what I'm saying? Like yeah, no. Like that's but no, but that's the idea, right? It's just like we must destroy the X Men. But they I mean, could be was, an ally to us. Point of view. <laughs> yeah. Right. But that's the thing, like... Kirk was the villain like, all so, along. Right, right. So I think, you know, we talked about it earlier with um, with Pike in The Cage, and it's funny how, even though you could argue this episode was, in a way, better to women, question mark, uh, at least in that regard it was. Although Elizabeth was... I mean, I'm happy she turned out to be the good guy in the end, but it was one of those things where I never know if something is sexist or not because, like, when they take the, the female character and so, in some ways they're like, no, but she's the good guy. And you're like, yeah, but they're relying only on her compassion. Mm -hmm. Like, strength through compassion, yes, but it's the idea of, like, oh, thank goodness her compassion, you know, bled through. She, she is a woman, you see. So, like, it's always hard for me to tell whether or not something is sexist via, like, oh, she's, she's strong, but via her powers of compassion, where Mitchell, no compassion, for he is man. So, like, I never know how to feel, but my point with it is, though, is that even though you can say that this pilot was better to women than the, the first one was, it was still, like, somehow problematic in another way, where it's like, Mitchell's a freak! Murder him! Yeah. And it's like, yeah. no, but he could have the power of a god. Yes, murder the god. There's only one true god, and your name isn't Jesus Christ. By the way, they bury the god in a tomb. I would like that to be on the record. They literally yes, they buried do. him, and then they fucking put a rock over him. And I'm like, well, apparently rocks stop god. I don't know if like, god was like scissors or something, but... How do you how do you feel about this yep. scenario, Anthony? Like it's like uh, I love it though. He, like I he was stopped by a that rock. He was a rock. That he was stopped by a rock. Well, I mean, obviously it is problematic, but the oh. the fact that he didn't see com that, that I that he didn't see it coming was do you was the only maybe? excuse. Now, see, I'm I'm gonna keep making excuses because I I love <laughs> the series so much. So I'm gonna so yeah. so I'm gonna oh, keep hey. doing this. Be Hey, you're like Tristan with Star Wars. Uh, I'm kidding. Exactly. I'm kidding. I'm, I will be oh. like this. Okay. No, no, no. Uh, all jokes aside, right? Let me be real here. I think it's just more of a censorship thing because they shouldn't. They couldn't show him getting crushed by the rock. It looked like the yeah. rock just closed up the tomb. So he's sitting in there, in there, and he's like, "Oh no, my Espernus can't move rock. I'm gonna suffocate." When it's like, no, the rock crushed him. Yeah. But it doesn't look like I mean, it crushed him a, because they can't show that. It's a question we can pose to the listeners: uh, if you hit so if you hit a god hard enough with a rock, will it stop? I think I think it depends. <laughs> are we dis are we throwing a rock or are we throwing Dwayne the Rock Johnson? Because I think Dwayne the Rock Johnson could damage a god if thrown hard enough. <laughs> well, that? I feel like I mean, me saying that Anthony's like, maybe I want to end the show. Maybe a, maybe a, maybe a, maybe a demigod. A what demi can I say so except you're welcome? So, sorry, Dwayne the Demi Rock Johnson. 
Because uh, he was Maui, like is... he was Maui and Moana. Yeah. Oh, jeez. I feel like I feel like I don't know who you're talking about. I feel like uh, we should. This is the best time to end it. Uh, how did you feel about the updated effects as we're wrapping this up? Um. Well, I mean, I, I understand what part of me, part of me would like to, you know, have them leave it alone, but uh, the. Uh, I guess I understand why they would update it for, you know, a, a remastering or a, a like a a re uh, an HD th- or uh, like a newer, you know, version of the of the show. I thought it was fine. Yeah, this is how I think of it, right? If you're going to put it on Netflix or something that you're not owning a physical title for, remaster it or put up the remastered version, right? That's fine, right? Uh, yeah. if you're going to put it on Blu-ray, I would prefer not, you know, don't remaster the effects and remaster everything else, but it does look a little odd when you can see strings everywhere, and I get it. I really do get it, but my whole thing is, when it comes to DVDs, I feel like that's a that standard definition. That can be left alone. Even if it's blown up on a large television, even if it's upscaled through a Blu-ray player of so, in some way or another, I would prefer a DVD to be left with the original effects intact, but I do understand a Blu-ray version with better effects. It's just going to get oh, yeah. odd like as time goes on where it's like, oh, now we're releasing you know, 4K discs or we're streaming this in 4K, so we got to update the effects even further. Like, how good are these effects? Like, am I going to be watching Star Trek one day and be like, you know, these look like PS5, PS6 uh, level <laughs> graphics for the ship? Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, I prefer having be at like, least oh, more... Wasn't this wasn't this the sixties? What was <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like everything else looks like the sixties, painfully so. And and in many ways in a good way, of course. You know, we love the camp. But still, in many ways you're like, oh of course it's the sixties. But then the effects come on and all of a sudden you're just like, Am I fucking playing a game at sixty frames per second on <laughs> Steam? What the fuck? <laughs> so it's yeah, although I will admit, if there are, uh, if they are, um, like, the original effects, if they're on the DVDs or Blu-rays as, like, special features, not, like, a full episode, yeah. but, like, just the, the, you know, the cuts and everything, that would be nice. Because I, I do feel like I want to see the originals. I don't want the original, oh, me too. like, masters to be in some, you know, CBS vault somewhere, and then we never get to see them unless we somehow track down really old, like, VHS and Laserdisc. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Which, uh, my dad had some VHS. Uh, he has the original five movies in a set. And I think he also has tapes of the original uh, like oh, Star Trek. You know, oh, TOS. Wow. Yeah, on VHS. And I know he had them on Laserdisc as well. But still, yeah. dude, like, after a while, it's I just don't like... Have the... I have what? the, um... I have the outer limits on VHS. I don't have the the Star Trek one. But, yeah, no. But, you can yeah, try to get them I, on eBay. I, I think they're really cheap. Yeah. Because no one wants VHS anymore. Yeah, that's true. I'm and and that that's that makes me sad, but um, but yeah, I really part of me wants to s- see it as it was it was originally intended and not effed with in any way. And I know like and it's funny too because like I don't think they messed with it other than the 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 Enterprise effects. I don't think they no, messed they with don't. the the phasers or anything like that. Um, but yeah, it's still frustrating. Speaking of phasers and lasers, how funny was it to see that? Now we're jumping back to the cage. How funny was it to see that giant laser in the cage? Like, you just, <laughs> like, I love it. We're on a mission of that peace. That's pretty cool. Bring, we're on a mission of peace. Brings out a fucking laser. I mean, you, it, it was a, it was a peaceful laser. I don't know. I mean, well, it, well, I mean, it's used to destroy, I assume it's used in the same way it was used. Destroy debris, not to like torture people. And blow up planets oh, yeah, no. and shit like that, but uh, but it was just so funny. It's like we're on a mission of peace. Brings a fucking laser. It's like mm-hmm. I feel like you have Gene Roddenberry. What the kids didn't like the lasers? CBS. <laughs> Gene. Gene. 
<laughs> all right, guys. So as we're, we're finishing this thing up, thank you all so much for listening to uh, the first episode of Star Trek Thursday, where we talked about the cage and where no man has gone before. So thank you all for listening in. As always, if you want to check out some of our other podcasts that Anthony and I have done and a bunch of our other hosts have done, you can actually search up those guys on the radio on our YouTube channel, which is those guys on the radio. Uh, so you can search up those guys on the radio on YouTube, which, <laughs> yes, that's our channel. And you can also check out some of the Let's Plays that Anthony and I have done. We've done Animal Crossing, Paper Mario, The Thousand Year Door, Mario Pinball Land, which Mario Pinball Land is actually something that you and I did on the most recent season of Those Guys Play, which was Those Guys Play yes. Season 4. You can search up Those Guys Play on YouTube and find us there. And you'll also find a bunch of other hosts that you know we worked with. We talked about Tristan before, being a huge uh, Star Wars fan. He likes Star Trek as well, but he's much more into the Star Wars universe. Uh, and he and which, I, which which I which I like Star Wars, but are, as I'm much into the Star Trek, and it's and it's mm. uh, amazing how we're friends. Yeah, I know, right? You haven't killed each other yet uh, in, a, in a battle to see who's more <laughs> superior. Uh, so, but what matters is that, uh, he and I have played, funnily enough, we've only played one Star Wars game on the show, and it was Star Wars Battlefront. Please help me. Uh, but, so we played Star Wars Battlefront on the show, and we played, like, games that weren't Star Wars. Uh, recently, he and I, for Season 4, we actually played, played Godzilla Destroy All Monsters Melee for the Nintendo GameCube. In the past, we've played Dragon Ball Z Budokai, Dragon Ball Z Infinite World, a lot of Dragon Ball Z stuff. Um, as well as we played Hot Wheels Turbo Racing, we played Pets Crazy Monkeys for the Wii, we actually played Red Steel for the Wii as well, and, um, we played some very interesting stuff on the channel, is what I'm trying to say, Anthony. And, uh, we also have oh, yes. games from his childhood, and also it's not just a Let's Play channel, it's also a general gaming channel, so I have TG Tutorials, I have a bunch of other videos as well, we do unboxings, we do reviews, so a lot of fun stuff you can check out there. And also we have, uh, I mentioned our podcast channel, we have our TG Productions YouTube channel as well, we do, where we do like fun little skits and stuff like that. And if you want to know where to catch all that stuff, like where do we follow you guys? Well, you can tweet us over at, at Those Guys Radio. You can follow us over on our Facebook, which is facebook.com slash those guys on the radio. Have some fun discussions with us there. And you can also uh, go over to our main website, which is teacherproduction.net. And that's also where you can buy some of our really kick-ass, cool merchandise, teacherproduction.net slash merchandise. Really cool, fun shirts and stuff like that. Or you can even get some merchandise over at our eBay, which is ebay.com slash USR slash those guys radio, uh, where if you go there, you can also buy not just t-shirts, but you can also buy like different anime or manga or video games from my personal collection. And if you want to give back to the show in other ways and also get something in return, you can go over to our Patreon, which is patreon.com slash Productions. And if you go there, depending on what tier you give to, you can actually say, hey, Anthony, hey, Matt, talk about uh, this season of Star Trek TOS. And even though we're going to talk about it eventually either way, think of it as like an express line. Right, so either you can give a dollar as a tip jar, or depending on what tier you give to, you can use it kind of as an express line to be like, "You're doing this now," and I will wake Anthony up at, at five in the morning. Be like, "We got paid. Let's do the let's do the podcast." <laughs> or, or in other cases, it could be like, "What are your top five Star Trek TOS episodes or something like that?" So depending on what tier you give to, you know, you can get uh, you can uh, give to a podcast, or you can give to um, Porky Pig. Apparently, you can give to a Let's Play. So you can be like, "I want you and Anthony to do a Let's Play about uh, this, you know, Star Trek game or this or view on this Star Trek game." Or it could even be uh, you can even become a sponsor. So we can actually give you guys a shout out during different podcasts or different Let's Plays and stuff like that. All right, so we are officially. Finished Finishing this up. Thank you all so much for listening in. Love you guys. Thank you for helping us be us. All right, Anthony. Say good night, everybody. Say good night to Thank everybody. you guys for listening. Thank you. See you next time with another episode of Star Trek Thursday. See ya. Bye.